Toto je můj rozsudek. Já, Olga Hepnarová, oběť vaší bestiality. Odsuzuji vás k trestu smrti přejetím a prohlašuji, že za můj život je x lidí málo. Akta non verba. Děkuji. V Praze 1973. Olga Hepnarová. Mass murderers may seem like they are a relatively new phenomena, and the perpetrators are almost exclusively men. Well, on the 10th of July, 1973, a Czechoslovakian woman would take her frustrations with society out on the innocent residents of Prague and end up becoming one of the earliest female mass murderers. She explained her actions as a form of revenge for the perceived hatred against her from her family and the wider world. This is the story of Olga Hepnarova, the Czech woman who attacked her own countrymen with a large truck. Olga was born on the 30th of June, 1951, in Prague, and seemingly came from a well-off family. Her mother was a dentist, and her father worked at a bank. Seeing as how Olga's parents were operating in Prague, they were probably doing pretty well for a Czechoslovakian family at the time. Later on in life, she developed some mental health problems that were eventually thought to be Asperger's syndrome. After Olga attempted to commit suicide in 1964 via an overdose on pills, she was committed to a psych ward for about a year in the city of Opajani, which is about 100 kilometers south of Prague. While in the psych ward, Olga was reportedly bullied by the other girls in the ward, which I can imagine made her feel more isolated and resent her family more that she's a hundred kilometers away from them and she's getting bullied in the place that she got sent to against her will. I'd imagine anyone would feel that way. Once she was released from the psych ward in Opajani, Olga tried to find work at various businesses and due to her condition, demeanor, or a combination of the two, Olga never held these jobs for very long. She eventually landed a gig where she was being trained as a bookbinder in Prague and she ended up getting transferred to the town of Hieb, near the German and Austrian borders. A lovely town that I personally am looking to buy property in. Ultimately, Olga left bookbinding and ended up working as a truck driver in Prague. As someone who has driven a truck before, I can tell you truck driving takes a serious toll on you mentally and physically, which wasn't the best fit for an already unstable woman. The odds began to stack against Olga more and more. She had lost all contact with her family and moved to a cabin in the woods in a small village called Oleshko. Oleshko is beautiful by the way, I rode my bike through Oleshko while going from Prague to Kutnohora. Sadly, the natural beauty of Oleshko didn't ease Olga's mind and she was becoming more and more isolated as the years went on. Combine all these isolating factors with the fact that Czechoslovakia had been invaded by the Soviet Union in 1968 when Olga was just 17, clearly Olga was becoming a time bomb that was itching to explode. The first major sign of Olga's derangement was when she set fire to the occupied home on her family's farm. Olga's sister and an elderly couple were sleeping in the farmhouse when Olga decided to take a taxi from the nearby town of Nakhod to a spot near the farm. She then walked to the farm in the dark, set the fire, and had escaped without being seen. Olga was never suspected of the crime, but it was something that she ended up confessing to during an interrogation in 1973. On January 11th, 1973, Olga had moved to room 502 in a Prague hostel called Pension Malashitsa. This is where she would make her plan of attack on society. At first, Olga wanted to try and derail a train or even bomb a crowded area. However, turns out derailing a train or manufacturing an explosive device 
proved to be a little bit more than Olga could manage on her own. Her next plan was to commit a mass shooting. Olga was hell-bent on finding a fully automatic rifle and then spray a crowd in one of the most crowded areas of Prague. Olga even joined a shooting club to try and improve her marksmanship and also to try and acquire a full-auto firearm. Finding the appropriate firearm was proving to be a real hassle. Also, Olga didn't want to risk getting involved in a gunfight with the police that patrol the area. She wanted people to die, but she was afraid of getting killed herself. Olga was struggling with the idea of how she could inflict the most damage possible. Eventually, it clicked. She could just use a large truck to kill a gathered crowd of people. She knew how to drive a large truck, she knew where to get a large truck, and she knew where people congregated in large numbers. She finally knew how she would make society pay for all the wrongs they had done to her. On the 9th of July, Olga left her room at the hostel, and she made her way back to Oleshko to see her cabin for a final time, and then she abandoned her car that was one of the only things Olga took immense pride in. These two actions to me were the symbolic cutting of her last remaining tether to reality. She was now free to take her revenge. She no longer had anything to lose at this point. On the 10th of July, Olga went to an equipment rental facility and showed that she had a valid license to drive a large transport truck. She also completed the test drive required to prove competence behind the wheel of the truck, and now she was free to drive around Prague with her rented Praga RN. Olga drove around Strasmerovo Namniesti, waiting for the time to strike. She stopped to mail two letters to separate newspapers explaining her actions, and around 1.30 p.m., Olga saw that there was close to 25 people waiting at the tram stop she hit the gas. Following the crash, three people were killed immediately, three more died later that day, and two more died several days after the attack. Twelve other people were injured, but had survived. Clearly, Olga's view of Czech society was flawed, because after she rammed the crowd of people, witnesses tried to help Olga, assuming that she had had a medical issue, or even a mechanical failure of the vehicle. Even after an intentional attack, the Czech people gave this girl the benefit of the doubt. Clearly, the society that she lived in wasn't as hateful towards her as she had thought. Olga didn't try to take advantage of these people, though. She admitted to the cop on the scene that she did this on purpose. She intentionally rammed these people, and she was immediately arrested. And there wasn't much of an investigation, as Olga openly admitted to everything. Her family even got her a lawyer with loads of experience and a phenomenal reputation, but she didn't take any of his advice. She insisted that she was sane, she never expressed any remorse in all of her testimonies, and she constantly blamed society for what she did. There wasn't much else the jury could do than sentence Olga to death. Olga had claimed several times that I'm not afraid of the death sentence and I do accept it. However, when the executioner was dragging Olga to the basement of the Pankratz prison, she was reportedly screaming and fighting the entire way. That's where they hang people now, was in the basement, not so much publicly since it was the 70s. And there is a supposed statement from Olga's executioner stating, quote, I myself am against hanging. It was me who hanged the beautiful woman. She had been driving around till there had been enough people at the tram stop, enough for her to run them over. Before I dragged her to the scaffold and hanged her, she vomited and made a mess in her pants in such a terrible way that I became disgusted with my job. That is why I am against the death sentence." End quote. On March 12th, 1975, Olga was executed by hanging. Her life was over, but her story was headline news worldwide. Olga ended up being the last woman to be executed in Czechoslovakia and one of the last people executed in the country period. Her story helped abolish the death penalty in this Central European nation. 
So this is where we can start to see some frightening parallels to the modern day. When you see some of the statements that Olga made, and look at some of the letters she wrote, there are some very common themes between Olga and other mass murderers. People who feel attacked by the cruelty of society, whether perceived or actual cruelty, and they want to take her revenge. Olga even stated that she didn't want to just be an anonymous suicide. She wanted others to suffer as she did. Here are some of the quotes from her various letters or statements from the trial. Quote, it would be easy to leave this world as an unknown self-murderer. This society is too poshy and it's too difficult to judge. Here is my judgment. I, Olga Hepnerola, victim of your bestiality, sentence you to death by running over. Another quote is, There were no trams, no cars, nothing was in my way. I said to myself, that was right to do it. I drove on the pavement, I went on, and ran into the crowd of people, knocking them down. End quote. Another, quote, If society destroys individuals, individuals can destroy society. End quote. Another quote, I wanted to take my revenge on society, including my family, because they are my enemy. Knowing that I managed to do it, I felt kind of release and satisfaction. The themes here are similar to many other mass killers in what tends to motivate them. Does this make them justified in their actions? Of course not. Olga did a horrible thing, and she paid the price for it. Sadly though, there are millions of people out there who feel just like Olga. And you never know when, or if, you're going to be waiting for the tram when one of them snaps. So, be good to each other and keep your running shoes on. Thank you all very much for watching. Until next time, everybody.